Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I'm A.J. Hogue, author of Effortless English. Learn to speak English like a native. Do not fear. Do not fear. That is the main message, the main topic of our show today. I will be interviewing Acharya again in just a few minutes, and we'll be talking about, of course, what everybody's thinking about and talking about this this whole uh, crisis, both the, the, the coronavirus aspects, the economic aspects, but talking about it from a spiritual perspective. And I think that we're going to get a much deeper and uh, stronger viewpoint about, you know, how to handle what's happening right now and what is really going on. Or to put it another way, what is going on possibly behind the scenes, things that we're not seeing. There may be other things happening than what we're just seeing in the media. I know I certainly believe that, and I think Acharya does too, and I'll talk to him about some of those things as well. So first of all, welcome everybody. Okay, let's see how our... Yep, we got a good live audience. So as always, I'm going to ask uh, Acharya questions and uh, and let him talk. And then, uh, so during that time, just relax <laughs> if you're watching live. And then when we... Uh, when we kind of get to a point, maybe, uh, I don't know, we'll see how much time he has, but then I'll try to get to your live comments and questions also, so you can ask him questions. Don't ask me questions uh, during the interviews, because there's no point you can ask me questions anytime, so save your questions for him, but you're going to have to wait a little bit. Slavika, good to see you, Elena. All right, guys, good to see you all, Paulika. Let's get started. Let me just give him a call, and we will start. Namaste, Acharya Ji. How are you? Good. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. I'm doing very well. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. So happy to have you today. Thank you for kind of last minute coming on the show. And uh, obviously the world's going crazy right now. So I, I think this is an important time to talk to you. Definitely. Well, as always, it's my pleasure certainly to be here with you and uh, uh, to speak with you about, yes, these very interesting world events <laughs> that are taking place. Yeah, it is truly amazing. But thank you so much again for having me on. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm uh, just going to jump right in um, with uh, something you put in your, your most recent video you did about COVID-19 and, and the, the, the virus, everything. And uh, you, uh, uh, you you said something which immediately I think uh, certain people, certainly I, knew what you were talking about and uh, maybe others didn't. So let's talk about it right away. You said the storm is upon us. And uh, let's talk about uh, we could that could be seen in several ways, and maybe you could discuss um, what does that mean? The storm is upon us. Sure, certainly. Yes, I did. Uh, I did say that on the video, and it does indeed have uh, several meanings. Uh, some much deeper and much more important than others. Uh, first of all, of course, for the vast majority of people who heard that, uh, most likely uh, it made sense to them on several levels the primary one being of course the most obvious and that is that oh we are in the midst of a storm we're in the midst of a crisis that's global in nature that is affecting uh, almost every nation i believe uh, the last i heard earlier today was 140 nations uh, have been affected thus far uh, so much has been happening uh, the economy has been has been affected uh, social functions have been affected there quite literally has not been a time like this in world history in a very, very long time. Mm. So, of course, on the more surface level, that's one thing that I meant is that it, it is indeed like a storm and we have to treat it as such. That meaning that, of course, people have to be very careful. They have to treat a storm seriously. You know, what does it mean to be in a storm? Well, a storm is dangerous. A storm is something that turns everything upside down. 
uh, a storm is dangerous. A storm is something that we must take seriously. It's not something we have to fear, though. You know, as long as you take precautions and you know what's happening, you will make it through the storm. So that's the first level in which I meant that saying. Uh, the second level, of course, is indeed a little bit deeper. And uh, it is uh, essentially pointing to the fact that, indeed, there are really two simultaneous but different trajectories that are going on right now in the world. The first one, of course, is indeed the COVID-19 crisis. That's on the surface level. That's what every human being is hearing about, uh, reacting to, etc. But as I've said, there are two tra trajectories that are going on simultaneously. The second one is a little bit more hidden. The second one is something that the vast majority of people are unfortunately not aware of. They will be as yeah. time goes on. And increasingly, more and more people have been aware of the second trajectory for the last well, several years. And what that second trajectory is, is this, that while this is indeed a real crisis, as I explained, I mean, COVID-19 uh, is not something that's made up, you know, it's, it's something real. Um, uh, while that is true on the one hand, on the other hand, ultimately, things are going to end up being very positive because with this second trajectory, forces throughout the world who are benevolent in nature, who are good, who are individuals who want to make the world a better place, are taking very wise and very intelligent advantage of the fact that things are indeed crazy right now. And they are working behind the scenes to indeed create the infrastructure that is necessary to bring about a better world. This is true economically, this is true politically, socially, culturally, and ultimately even spiritually. So without beating around the bush, uh, let me just explain what I mean by this. There has indeed been, in the same way that we've talked about how there is an evil cabal, who yes. has been basically in control of the world for a long time. These faceless individuals who are malevolent in nature, who are evil in nature, who have ruled over us for many, many generations, who are responsible for most, if not all, of the wars that have taken place, who are responsible for poverty. These people are globalists. Uh, these are individuals whose ultimate goal has been to create a one-world totalitarian dictatorship in which they rule over um, a, uh, a culture that has been reduced to something truly terrible in the same way that you have this elite group of evil people who have been in control of the world, unbeknownst to, again, the majority of individuals, there has been a counterforce in play for quite some time. As far as how long? Pretty long, longer than people know, actually. This counterforce, like, again, like their counterparts, the evil people, this counterforce consists of a group of individuals who are very powerful. Uh, many of them are in the US military, other militaries as well. A few of them are politicians, not many, <laughs> but a few are politicians. Some are spiritual teachers. Uh, some are even uh, cultural people, etc. They are across the board. These good individuals, who again are this counterforce to the evil, have been themselves strategizing and planning for a very long time to turn the situation around. And in the same way that I've said in the past, these evil people have turned reality upside down. Well, these good people want to restore reality. They want to turn it right side up and bring sanity back to the world and basically dislodge these evil entities and beings and people who have been ruling the world. So this is in actuality, interestingly, what is actually happening behind the scenes. And this is really the more, you could say, esoteric uh, nature of what is meant by the storm, that the storm is indeed upon us. That simultaneous with this coronavirus happening throughout the world, and very interestingly, all distractions being taken away from humanity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, none of this is by accident. The fact that concerts are gone, sporting events are gone, uh, bars closed, restaurants closed, cafes closed, and people are being basically kept in place 
to keep them from harm. While simultaneously, again, things are happening around the world, many things, and we can go in depth a little bit into this if you desire. Sure. To again bring about this defeat of the forces of evil. And uh, many of us who know what's happening, uh, including yourself, I know that you know, you've been keeping up with this uh, very much as well, but many of us who know what's happening, we understand that in the very near future, and when I say the near future, I mean before 2020 is over, we're going to be living in a new world, the likes of which people have fantasized about, people have wished for, people have yearned for for so long. That is a world in which evil is finally defeated, the evil that's before us, but also the hidden evil that has been there, you know, that uh, that hidden enemy, uh, to quote someone who just said that very famous individual <laughs> yes, <indeed. laughs> who, just, uh, who tweeted that several days ago, this hidden enemy will indeed be defeated and we will win. So that's the storm. That is the storm that I was talking about, both the, the COVID-19 virus, but also what's happening behind the scenes by some extremely courageous people to essentially eradicate evil from the earth. In, indeed, indeed. And, and there's essentially a, uh, let me just swap my camera here. Uh, I guess we call it hidden wars, uh, an invisible war, not not completely invisible. Uh, I know that, uh, I'm guessing you are uh, quite aware of, of QAnon and, and the QAnon, um, what do we call it? Uh, phenomenon. Phenomenon. There you go. That's the word I was looking for. Yes. And, you know, it's interesting because something you just said, it, it reminds me, I, I had, before our interview, I had written down something that Q posted on February 9th. I'm just going to read it because it just, it speaks very much to what you just said. It says, for every item that carries the darkness of humanity, there's one that holds the light. And that light is worth believing in, not just in others, but in yourself as well. Trust and believe in yourself. The silent war continues. If you could maybe just, if you want to, you can comment on that. Just Sure, sure, definitely. Well, several things. First of all, as far as QAnon, and this is the first time I'm saying this on video, uh, my close, close disciples already have known this about me for quite some time. Uh, other individuals, um, um, Other individuals have known this about me for quite some time. Yeah, for myself, I have been quite literally following QAnon since maybe uh, maybe his third or fourth post, something like that, on wow. 4chan. Um, yeah, I, I was on 4chan, then 8chan, now it's called 8kun. And indeed, uh, from almost the very beginning, I believe either late October or early November of 2017, I began following this, uh, what at the time was thought to be an individual named Q. Uh, so again, I was following this from extremely early on, and immediately I understood from this person's posts that, yes, this was for real. This is someone who is indeed uh, an insider, because some people can be fooled by such things, some people can't, and I'm one of those who can't. Uh, so I understood immediately that this is someone who is indeed someone who is an insider, someone who is military intelligence. So this is, first of all, what Q is. And yeah, let me just talk about that for a moment, if I can. For those individuals who are not quite sure what is meant by Q, um, Q is indeed a group of individuals, to quote Q, um, less, what is it, less than 10, uh, of whom I believe only three, not more than three, are civilians. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. The rest of these individuals are indeed military people, including military intelligence. These people are extremely close to not just the Trump administration, but Donald Trump himself. Indeed, Donald Trump himself sometimes posts in what are called the Q drops as Q plus. That's how he signs his signature. So Trump himself is not only aware of this, he has actually participated as Q plus. When you see uh, a posting and it says Q plus, that's literally the president, President Donald Trump himself posting. Now, interestingly, for the first two years or so, of course, there was a lot of skepticism about this. Yeah. Uh, individuals who followed Q were called everything from conspiracy theorists to uh, unintelligent people, et cetera, et cetera. That has ceased. That has ceased now. Because anyone who has looked at the posts of Q for over two years now understand that he has been correct about quite literally every single thing he has said. Not just correct, often he'll state something 
and then months later it happens. Yep. You know, yeah. Uh, you know, future proves past to quote Q. <laughs> so very often he'll say something and people are confused. What does he mean? And then two months later, bam, there's the explanation right there. So Q is indeed something quite real. Uh, it's not fantasy. It's not conspiracy theory. I'm a person with a PhD. I'm extremely, you know, I'm, I'm intelligent. And I understand, I understood from, again, maybe a few days after Q started posting that this is for real. And those who don't get that yet, well, very soon they will. Now, to get back to the actual quote, yes, it's interesting. Q is many, many things. He is certainly an, an insider. He is military intelligence. He speaks on behalf of the president, and not just the president, but greater uh, than even simply one man, this movement to liberate the earth. That being the case, interestingly, much of his terminology, not all the time, but you will see where there is, let's say, spiritual terminology that he'll use. And this is indeed one of the things that he talks about, dark to light, how presently we're living in a world of darkness. And of course, you know that I've talked about this for many years. Others have as well. You have as well. We've been living in a, in a world of darkness. And indeed, light is going to come to the world. It's going to come to the world both externally, that is in the world itself. The light of God will be revealed, but also, yes, our own light. We are to be lights upon the world at this time. And this is what's interesting. You can even forget about Q. Let's just say even with this crisis that's going on, with the COVID-19 uh, virus that's spreading throughout the world, even if you don't believe in Q, we are to be lights right now upon the world. The yes. world is in tremendous fear. The world is in panic. And panic and fear are our greatest enemies. And more, they are the friends of our enemies, <laughs> actually, <laughs> yes, indeed. of individuals who mean harm over us. This being the case, yes, we are to be lights to all those who are around us. We are to share light, to share positivity, to share goodness, to share happiness. And it is our mission now more than ever for anyone who is spiritual. Uh, and you don't have to be a spiritual leader, just a spiritual person. We need to spread this message, this one message, to all people, all of the inhabitants upon this earth do not fear that is the number one message that we need to hear today do not fear because of course one of the reasons why this so-called crisis yeah you know, and again it is real but it's being manipulated one reason why this crisis is indeed being manipulated in the way that it is by the evil forces that are there is indeed to cause fear and panic and depression and a sense of hopelessness on the part of individuals, millions, billions of individuals. Now, why? Why would they want to do this? Well, when you're hopeless, you don't fight back. When you're hopeless, you're not strong. When you're hopeless, you don't go out of your way to think, to analyze, to reason, all right, what is actually happening around, around me? And more, you don't have the strength to help others either. So this is why, again, these malevolent forces who are who have been, let's say, in control of our world, this is why they want us to fear. Well, we are to do the opposite. We are to be courageous. We are to not fear anything. See, this is what ultimately we have to understand. And of course, if a person is not spiritual, what to speak of atheistic, well, this won't help them, what I'm about to say. Uh, so those people will continue, sadly, to fear. But if you're a spiritual person, and regardless of you know what specific tradition you're following, if you are a spiritual person, this is the time more than at any other time to take shelter of God and to bathe yourself in God's grace in such a way that you realize that if you're a spiritual person, there's nothing to fear. You know, there's nothing to fear. It has said that it has been said that this. COVID-19 virus is like uh, a, an invisible enemy. Well, we have an invisible friend on our side, and that is God. So if we take shelter of God, then we are to realize that we have nothing to fear. And more, once we realize that, we need to bring the light of that message and the light of truth to everyone around us in every way and any way that we can, even if it means just our family, or if it means that we have 
some large platform, a YouTube channel, something, something large like this. We have to bring this message to people. Do not fear. In the, I, as you're talking about this, I just, uh, if, if I could, I'm just going to paraphrase because uh, it, it brings to mind. It's, it's uh, um, from the uh, Bhagavad Gita as it is. You, you uh, recently tweeted out the uh, uh, a quote from uh, text 66, which ends in do not fear. And then uh, in this, if I could just paraphrase this, Prabhupada's commentary. It goes right along with what you said. I'm just going to paraphrase. I'll, he, of course, he's saying Krishna specifically. I'll just replace that with God as a more general English word. One should be confident that in all circumstances, God will protect him from all difficulties. One should always think himself helpless and should consider God the only basis for his progress in life. And, uh, and he goes on, as soon as one seriously engages himself in devotional service to the Lord in full God consciousness at one, he becomes freed from all contamination of material nature. So anyway, I thought that it came to mind as you, uh, as you were saying that, that Beautiful. as you said, that, that ultimately this, um, and, and you know, I found this myself too, that the more you, you surrender in this way, that you you do realize that there that there's ultimately nothing to fear. Exactly, exactly. Yes, this is the nature of surrender. You know, it's interesting. Again, this is true for several different religious paths, but for Sanatana Dharma, very specifically for the Vedic tradition, this is central. This idea of surrendering oneself completely at the feet of God and just letting go of our concerns, letting go of our fears, letting go of any anxiety, and understanding that ultimately, yes, God is indeed that invisible friend who is with us at all times, residing within our heart. And if we surrender to God, then we understand what is there to fear? What is there to fear? That the very author of creation, the very author of reality itself is with us at all times, loving us. And ultimately, we can't be harmed. You know, it's not to say that something might not happen to our body or something might not temporarily happen. Uh, but ultimately, ultimately, we are in the hands of God. And that is the best place to be, to understand that we are in the hands, literally, in the hands of that being who loves us more than anyone, more than any, any individual being can. So, yes, this is what it means to surrender our lives to God with trust, with faith, and understand that God will guide us. God will guide us through the storm, and we are indeed in the midst of a storm. And, <laughs> you know, it's, it's very interesting. You know, I myself, I'm not a very big boat person, but uh, several people in my family are. In fact, uh, I have a cousin in New York who uh, has a beautiful, massive boat that he actually took me out on not long ago, maybe about uh, six months ago or close to a year ago. And it's interesting, when you are someone who's really into boats and you go into, into rough waters and a storm suddenly appears, it's interesting how what you rely on is a combination of your own skill, but also faith in God. Mm. <laughs> you know, anyone who's been, on a, on, who's been on a boat and has steered a boat, you know, and suddenly a storm appears, they know that, that you rely on your own skills, but then ultimately also on God combination of both. Well, in the same way, that's what we are to do with this storm that is here. It is indeed a storm. Uh, we have to rely on, on indeed ourselves, on our own skills, our own intelligence, etc. We have to have faith in ourselves, you know, and but also we have to have faith in God. We have to know that we're not alone, that as we're steering that boat and the storm is all around us, we, you know, to paraphrase, you know, we have a co-pilot. We have someone who is there with us also guiding us through that storm and that ultimately the storm will be over and the sun will arise again and that sun is going to be more glorious than anything that we've ever experienced in um uh i think it's in the perennial philosophy uh, aldous huxley uh his uh, the first chapter it's interesting because you were talking about relying on ourselves as well and that and they, i think they go together really because uh because when you when you, when you say when you rely on ourselves, you know, I think of it's not our, I guess, our normal selves we're relying on, but having faith in what Sanatana Dharma calls Atman. And mm -hmm. 
and and it just brought to mind that they uh in that first chapter i think it's the first chapter uh huxley describes uh, there was in during world war ii there was um I can't remember a psychologist. Somebody went on a, a a bombing run with some with a plane, right? They're flying a a bombing run, and they wanted to observe how the men reacted under combat situations, you know, stress. And uh, and the the observer noted that in back in England, when when they're all safe, each man had you know all kinds of different personalities. One man's funny. One man's really nervous. Another man. Um, you know, has a, a bad temper, all of these things. But then as as they flew into flack and they're, you know, they're in danger of their lives, he he observed that each man became calm, completely like all those little quirks, those little details of personality kind of just like faded away. And like each man just became calm and clear and did his duty. It's, and and like the, something else emerged in that moment of of you know mortal danger, and then Huxley goes on to talk about how you know this is kind of maybe a glimpse into this this true nature of of Atman or soul or spirit. And I, I don't, and could you discuss that as well, or what your opinion sure. about that? Sure, exactly. That's you're <laughs> you're you were very intuitive. Actually, that's exactly what I'm talking about. When I say that, yes, it has to be a combination of relying on God, but also relying on ourselves and our own skills, meaning, of course, our true selves, you know, meaning on meaning relying on who we truly are within. So, yes, it's very interesting. Yes, uh, Aldous Huxley wrote about that. Several people wrote about this very interesting state that specifically warriors go into. And it doesn't have to be only warriors, but we'll start with that. Where, yes, when suddenly there is indeed danger, and now suddenly the battle takes place, a true warrior, someone who is very well trained, someone who is a very inward sort of person, they go into this zone of peace and calm, where it's like they are in the center of the tornado, they are in the center of the storm. And it's very interesting how a true warrior is not the stereotype that you would think that, you know, they're very emotional and just very agitated. No, a true warrior is like a yogi. A true warrior, indeed, because they achieve that state of peace and calm and direct, absolute focus, um, they are in touch with their true self. And it's as a result of that, that, yes, they do very well under such circumstances, that, you know, they're, the best within them comes out. Well, in the same way, again, this is true not just of the warrior, but of spiritual people as well. This is true of yogis, of any serious spiritual person who has done spiritual practice for some time. And that is, you know, when it comes to the point where there's a crisis, uh, unlike, sadly, other people who may be very agitated, fearful, running here and there, not knowing what to do, making bad decisions, the spiritual person will indeed be this ocean of peace. And as a result, they'll be able to think in, in just a very clear sort of way, make very clear decisions, uh, they will find resources that are there within them that maybe they themselves didn't even know that they had until that crisis hit. And more, because they will be in that state of peace and calm, despite everything happening around them, they'll be an example to others. They will inspire others around them as well. So, yeah, that part especially is very important. And again, it goes back to what I was saying before about how this is what we need to be for those around us. We ourselves need to be individuals who are lights in the world, where when others are fearful, they see us and they become calm. They see us and they have hope. They see us and they think to themselves, oh, that person is not panicking. That person, on the contrary, that's what I should be like. Why is this person so calm and collected and they seem to know what they're doing, despite the fact that things are going crazy around us? So we are meant to be exactly like that. So yes. That's a very good example. And, you know, the, those who follow Q, I think we, we are expecting this, uh, that, you know, it's, Q talked about 10 days of darkness and whether it's exactly 10 days or not, I don't know. But that, in other words, the storm may intensify even more. And that exactly what you're saying is that we need to be a light. We need to be an example of calm, of, of, of peace, of strength. This 
this may become even more important. I mean, we may just, you know, be kind of at the leading edge and, um, you know, the people around us, I've seen this a little in, in a few of my family members that, that, that I can hear the fear and panic starting to come in now. You know, they, they kind of were ignoring it and now it's coming in. And uh, could you talk about this idea of the 10 days of darkness and then, of course, the the the, the more encouraging uh, uh, posts then speak of also, as you said, dark to light. So the darkness is not forever. Sure, definitely. No, in fact, actually, relatively speaking, the darkness doesn't last for very long, actually, yes, at all. Yeah, yeah. So interestingly, yes, things uh, and, you know, people, please be patient with me. You know, this is the fact. Things are going to get worse. Things are going to get worse. But don't let that make you scared in any way, because, again, it's going to be very, very temporary. It's not going to last for very long. But things obviously are going to continue to get bad for some time. That's something that everyone is predicting. That's something that, uh, you know, uh, all sorts of officials are predicting. They're predicting this with the economy, et cetera, et cetera. But then ultimately, yes, there will be what Q calls 10 days of darkness. As far as what that will be, uh, most people have analyzed this to mean that most likely the, the Internet will indeed go down for approximately 10 days. Now, of course, as we say all this, we have to understand that things are always fluid. So as far as timeline, as far as exactly how long uh, A, B, or C will, will last, et cetera, that's fluid. So that's why anyone who says with exact specificity, oh yes, this specific thing will happen on this date, mm, no, no, uh, you can't take such people too seriously. Intelligent people know that it's, it's always fluid. But as far as the 10 days of darkness, yes, uh, people have speculated that what that means is that indeed the Internet will eventually go down. And it's interesting how I've uh, I've spoken about this with others. In recent days, there have been articles, meaning literally in the last 48 hours, about how the Internet is being taxed right now. Yeah, I've seen that. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> it's interesting how we've been we've been talking about this for a year now. And now suddenly on, in major newspapers and news sources, they're talking about how the Internet is having problems. They've even asked Netflix and YouTube to lower the quality of, of their streaming services, et cetera, because the, the Internet is, is being pushed to the brink, et cetera. So, yes, you know, this, this is a reality. The Internet is, is going to go down. They're kind of giving us little signals about that. When it does, uh, it will be for about 10 days. And again, it's fluid. It might be less. It might be more. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, uh, Q being Q if he's exactly right. And it's exactly 10 days. But yes. again, we'll see. During that period, however, uh, and oh, and let me say it's not going to be just the Internet. It's going to be all news sources. So in other words, TV will cease to exist. The TV network, CNN, will cease to exist. In the case of CNN, it probably will never come back altogether. Um, but uh, newspapers will cease, et cetera. Um, now, this sounds very scary, and for many people it will be. However, uh, the vacuum will be taken up by the emergency broadcast system. You know, again, this is the scenario that uh, individuals who follow Q, this is what we have ascertained from looking at the Q drops. Yeah. Uh, the emergency broadcast system will become functional and operative, and both the president, but then uh, real authorities. See, when we hear the word authority, we're we are necessarily suspicious, you know, question authority. No, these are going to be real authorities. These are going to be the, the good people, people who truly, truly want to help the American people. Uh, the authorities will begin broadcasting and they will begin to explain to the American people what is actually happening. And actually, I take that back, not just the American people. They will be explaining to the world worldwide what is happening and again for those of us who have known for quite some time and in my case i've known for much of my entire life what was going to happen but for those of us who have known for the last few months few weeks few years whatever it won't come as a surprise but for the vast majority of individuals um, what is going to be revealed about the actual nature of our world for most people it's going to be a shock Mm -hmm. It's going to be a surprise. We're going to hear about major politicians. We're going to hear about major, indeed, religious leaders, global religious leaders with who are in charge of massive churches. We're going to hear about celebrities. We're going to hear about all sorts of individuals who, indeed, um, have been caught performing evil.
doing evil, truly evil deeds. Uh, let me just say Jeffrey Epstein like. Yeah. Evil deeds. And it's not just a matter of, it's not going to be just a matter of, uh, you know, uh, I have said such and such. No, we're going to actually have film. We're going to have film of these individual individuals, not just performing evil deeds, but even confessing on camera. Because over the course of the next several months, many of these individuals, and we're talking about some of the most important individuals on the planet. We're not talking about people who the masses don't know. No, the masses will know these people within a second. Mm -hmm. They will be literally on camera confessing, and we will see their trials. Um, most of these people will be tried in civilian courts. Some of them who have actually committed treason against the nation will be tried in military courts. Uh, some of them will be executed because they have literally, um, they have literally committed treason against the United States of America, the likes of which we, we can scarcely believe, but yet it's true. And we will literally have films of their trials where they will confess and all the evidence will be shown. Uh, so this is what will be happening, um, in accordance with what Q has said probably over the next several months, it's going to happen quicker than people think. Again, the coronavirus, while it is something real, it is something that is being used to create the perfect conditions such that the truth can now be revealed about the nature of our world, uh, what is the nature of this evil. And let me just say, during those 10 days when all of our information, for the most part, will be coming through the emergency broadcast system, they will be presenting the PG-13 version yeah. of everything, of necessity. It will be family friendly. The actual information is not family friendly. Yeah. And once the 10 days of darkness is over and the Internet is back up, etc., all the deep information will be available for people to view, to see, to hear, to read of their own choice. You know, because some of this is so traumatizing that quite literally, you know, as I'm sure you know, seasoned police officers and detectives, when they saw the evidence, it made them ill and they had to vomit. Yes, indeed. When they saw this in New York City. And I'm from New York City and I've had five police officers in my family, including a Bronx detective. Uh, and trust me, I know these people, these are these are tough guys like you would not believe. Yes. For them to see this evidence of pedophilia, of abuse committed by some of the top politicians in America, and you can imagine who they are. Hmm. They're not hmm. in power now, <laughs> thank God. For these seasoned detectives to see this and quite literally have to go run to the bathroom and throw up. Yeah. It's horrible, but it's true, and it's real, and it's going to come out. So this is all the negative. This is all the negative. This is all the darkness. But of course, once this all indeed does come out, what happens? What happens is the minds of the people are free. Finally, once and for all, the eyes of the people are open. Now, finally, people are awake and they realize the nature of the world that they've been living in quite literally all their lives. You can look at the oldest person living in the world today. When that person was born, this evil system was in place. Yeah. That's how long evil people have controlled our world. There is no human being alive in the plan on the planet today who, has, who was not born under this evil system. So what will be the good that will come out of all of this? Well, first of all, the eyes of the people will finally be opened. People will be awake. And now for the first time, people will be able to make 100% informed decisions about their lives. More all of these evil individuals, and there are going to be a lot of them, uh, no one knows the exact number. Uh, we know that there are, and I could be off by a few thousand, there are maybe 120,000 sealed indictments waiting to be opened, hmm. roughly, hmm. something like that. But once this, once this all occurs, and all of these individuals who have been behind the scenes quietly with their hidden little, little demonic faces, torturing us as little bureaucrats, as people in the intelligence agencies, murdering people throughout the world, stealing money, uh, uh, corrupting people, abusing children. Once these people are in prison, that's when the sun arises. Mm -hmm. That the light will be in this world because people now will be free, finally, of these in evil individuals 
and they will be able to finally control their own destiny for the first time in who knows how long. So that's where the light will be. And, you know, I, I know in uh, the phrase you'll see again and again and again in, in the, you know, QAnon and just in general, uh, this great phrase, the great awakening, the great awakening. And and, and can you can talk about that? How do you think that might uh, play out? And I guess more importantly, you know, what can we individually do when uh, as things as we go into that period of darkness and people are going to freak out? <laughs> we know that. Um, so what can we do to to be that light for people? And then, of course, then in the next stage, as this great awakening happens, what what's the best role we can play individually as, you know, as spiritual people, as good people, um, as maybe others around us are freaking out or or falling apart or just confused? This period is going to be a crash course of spiritual enlightenment of necessity hmm. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for yeah. many people. So that's the first thing is that, first of all, individuals who are who are stronger, who are more aware, etc. First thing that, that we need to do is to, first of all, make sure that we are indeed strong. We have to make sure that indeed we're taking shelter of God. We have to inform ourselves as much as possible about what is actually happening in the world. But then, that being, being said, what we then need to do is indeed to be there for others. Because you're right, the majority of people, are they still don't know what's happening, and they're going to be in shock. They're going to be shocked. Indeed, some many millions of people innocently on their part, just due to ignorance, uh, even su still support many of these evil creatures who, who are or were in power just out of, again, innocence and ignorance. You know, they support some of these celebrities who are actually demonic uh, Satanist pedophiles, et cetera, et cetera. What we need to do is to understand this. We need to be patient with those individuals who are in fear, with those individuals who are confused, and we need to be patient with them and slowly explain to them, you know, not in a, oh, told you so, sort of arrogant way. No, no, on the contrary, we need to be very humble about this. Those of us who know what's happening, we need to then approach those around us who are indeed very confused and fearful, uh, figuratively put our arm around their shoulder and say, look, it's okay, it's all right. Ultimately, things are going to be extremely good if you just be patient and not fear. If you have any questions about what's actually happening, just let me know. We can't force information on people, yeah. but we have to make ourselves available and literally just say that, look, I actually know what's happening, not because I'm some special prophet. I just did the research. I know what's happening. Let me. Do you want me to explain to you? And just leave it open to them. And more emotionally, we have to be there for people. Mm -hmm. Because, yes, what does it mean to be in a situation of mass panic, which we're almost at now? Not quite. <laughs> uh, you know, we're not, we're not there yet. Uh, it's gonna, it's, there's going to be much more panic as time goes on, especially when the Internet suddenly disappears yeah. and television, et cetera. You can imagine uh, yeah. so many individuals who have been addicted to TV and the Internet, suddenly it's not there. So we haven't seen anything yet. That's when the panic hits. That's why it's 10 days of darkness. During that time, we need to emotionally support others. Yes. You know, and just be there for them as much as possible. Expl again, explain to them. But it's not simply a matter for most people of just in an intellectual explanation. You know, some people just literally need to know, look, you're not alone. It's okay. I love you. It's fine. You're not alone. You're, we're going to get through this. So emotionally, we have to be there for others as well. Absolutely. You know? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Are, are you yeah. okay? Do you still have uh, time for a couple questions? Uh, yes, actually, yes. Uh, let me let me say you can you can keep me for another half hour if you want. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. All right. Let's get into because uh, I know people are typing furiously and. <laughs> Okay, so this is kind of you know you'll uh, this this speaks to the uh, what you're saying how while there is a coronavirus that that it is being used manipulated for other purposes and perhaps both sides trying to um, so Kalal says in our country already 260 people died due to dengue fever in the last two months only one person died from coronavirus, but everyone is in a panic about coronavirus due to the media focus. Mm. Um, yeah, so if you could maybe, I guess, speak to the nature of, of while there's a coronavirus, that this, this 
pub this this kind of sort of media uh, aspect to it and what's going on with that. Sure. Yeah. The the media frenzy like we've never seen in the history of the media. Yeah. <laughs> which, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah it's, it's amazing. Whenever the media goes on a frenzy about something, you have to always be suspicious that something is going on. Yeah. Um, but yes, it, it's very true. Again, um, coronavirus is indeed something real. But statistically speaking, um, it's actually not been that bad as, as compared to previous, previous kinds of epidemics. For example, H1N1, you know, when that hit America, I think I could be off of by, again, a thousand or two, but I think uh, 20,000 Americans died and ah. not one store closed. Right, right. And not nothing. one store closed, not one restaurant closed, et cetera. Um, and again, it's not to downplay the coronavirus, but something suspicious is going on when you have other illnesses that have killed a hundred times more people than coronavirus and nothing closed. There was no worldwide pandemic. So yes, uh, again, it is something real. It is something that, uh, as far as the speculation of what is the actual origin of this, you know, uh, I mean, it's pretty obvious what the origin is, but I, I don't think we could even say because we don't, we don't want to lose either of our channels. <laughs> right. But as far as what the actual origin is, yes, it's malevolent. It was something that was cre that was released on purpose by the evil people with the idea that, you know, they probably wanted to kill several hundred million people. Uh, the good forces, and again, you know, uh, I don't want to go too deeply into this just so that we we suddenly don't go blank on the screen <laughs> yeah. and censored. But the good forces uh, got a handle on this very early on and purposefully uh, altered the virus so that it's not as deadly. It's a fraction of what it would have been. Uh, and that being the case, yes, you know, while it is something that's serious, hundreds of millions of people are not going to die. Millions of people aren't even going to die. On the contrary, uh, I am predicting, and I'm not alone, actually. Uh, President Trump has, has said this. Other people, the CDC, other individuals have said that uh, this this will reach its peak pretty soon. And most likely, the crisis will be over within a few months. Not meaning 100 months, meaning like two or three, maybe yeah. four at yeah. the very most. And I've actually told people six months from now, people will ask, Corona what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what there was something called coronavirus the only thing they'll remember of coronavirus in a few months is that they didn't have toilet paper <laughs> <laughs> otherwise yes this is going to go away this is going to go away uh again uh, president trump is quite accurate about this it's funny how as usual the media did nothing but made fun of him when he first said this and now every single medical source has agreed now so now they've shut up about that that as soon as it becomes summer, that will mitigate the virus tremendously, if not eradicate it altogether. I remember I watched live when President Trump actually first said that, that, oh, as soon as spring and the summer hits, that is going to mitigate this virus. And I remember the media just giving a collective uh, a collective uh, laugh about this. Oh, the, oh, our idiot president doesn't know what he said. And of course, now, no, he was correct. Every medical authority now says the same thing. So, yes, you know, this is not going to last forever at all. This will be gone within a few months, never heard of again. Wonderful. Cleefy says, uh, Mr. Archaya, what can we do, uh, some specific things we can do uh, during these events to, uh, to deal, with a, deal with a calm mind, in other words, to develop a calm mind? Uh, so, so if some people are kind of uh, feeling nervous and, uh, you know, what do you recommend for, you know, how do you calm yourself so that you can be that light? Because you got to get yourself into that state first so you can help others. Absolutely. Very, very important practical question. Um, the number one most easy answer, but yet a very effective answer is, first of all, breathe. Mm. Don't forget to breathe. <laughs> you see, a million studies have been done about this. You know, so many studies have been done that when a person is, is in anxiety or nervous or, fe or fearful, the first thing that happens is their breath is altered. They forget how to breathe. Mm. You know, they're no longer fo focusing on their breath. You know, they start breathing in odd ways that just makes everything worse. It just exacerbates the situation. So this is something that every yogi knows, that every... Um, person who practices yoga knows is, first of all, very simply, become aware of your breath. Become aware of your breathing. 
and try to breathe in not a crazy way, but consciously, purposefully try to breathe in a rhythmic, calm sort of way where you're actually breathing in a little bit deeper. Uh, you're exhaling a little bit deeper, but you're very aware of this calm breath. That alone will begin to calm you down in the immediate. Yeah. In the immediate. So that's, that's the first thing, something that simple. Uh, the other thing is, of course, as a practice, meditation. Meditation is the thing that will give us really everything <laughs> that we need. Yeah. It will give us peace. It will give us calm in the midst of the storm. It will calm the mind. It will calm even the body. You know, it's interesting. Again, so many hundreds of studies have been done where it's shown that when you're meditating, even the shoulders relax, the muscles relax, the nerves are calmed and very still. When you meditate, it, I've actually said it's like it's like pouring nectar on your nerves. Yeah. You know, sweet nectar on your nerves. You know, suddenly you go from being like this to mm. calming the nerves. So practicing meditation on a regular basis is something that's extremely important. Also, this is something else very practical. Again, entertainment is gone. You know, out, outside entertainment, concerts, you know, uh, restaurants, things like this. People are going to be stuck at home for a little while. Now, this is the thing. This is going to demarcate human beings. Yeah. When people are stuck at home, there is going to be one of two choices that people can make. The individuals who sadly are not very intelligent, what are they going to do? Probably play video games for 12 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> Especially once the internet is down, they still have video games you know, that they can play not dependent on the internet. Uh, and eat a lot and gain a lot of weight, et cetera, et cetera, and just have a very unhealthy lifestyle. Some people will choose that path, but the intelligent people will instead choose this other path. If you're going to be stuck at home, uh, there's still time. Do this now. Make sure you have good books available. And no, not obviously forget about Kindle. <laughs> forget about anything like this, anything that you have to download. Yeah. I mean, you know, obviously, if you have something already on these devices, that's fine. But forget about internet access. Try to have physical books in your hand that you can hold and that you can smell. I love the smell of real books. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm one of these people who loves books. Have a lot of books on hand, but not novels, not fiction, not you know worthless romance novels. Have books of wisdom. Have inspirational books. Have the Bhagavad Gita. Have the Srimad Bhagavatam. Have Buddhist works. You know, wonderful um, Mahayana texts, Theravada texts. Have Tao Te Ching. Have books by even contemporary authors who are very inspiring to you. You know, have Lord of the Rings, <laughs> one of my favorite books. You know, uh, Lord of the Rings will keep you busy. It's like a thousand pages, all you know, three volumes. Have books on hand that you can read and that will inspire you and that will actually feed your mind actual spiritual nutrition, the nu nutrition that it needs. So yes, and I can go on, but there are many, many things like this that people can do to keep themselves calm in crazy situation like this. Excellent, excellent. Okay, let's see. Okay, Gustavo has an interesting question. In the big picture view, and thinking about the future, are dark times necessary for us as human beings? Is there some uh, necessary element to dark times, difficulties in general? Like I would just to add my own uh, uh, element to this is, you know, I would say both individually and as, of course, collectively as we're dealing with now. Mm, sure, sure. <sighs> Individually, individually, people are all different and people have different needs. Some people actually uh, thrive very nicely when things are just always going well. But then for, the, for people on the more mass scale, adversity makes us strong. Mm -hmm. Adversity does indeed make us strong. You know, it's interesting. People have pointed this out that when you look historically at various civilizations, civilizations that become too prosperous too quick and where the people of those nations become very spoiled with luxuries and riches um, those tend to be individuals within those nations who for the most part become very weak 
Mm-hmm. They become morally weak. They become spiritually weak. They become self-indulgent. They become self-centered. Does this sound familiar? Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, of course, has happened, especially in the West, especially in America and Europe, but all many nations as well. When you have too much prosperity and, oh, everything is fine. And, oh, what is my greatest concern today? Oh, am I going to get... Uh, a grande or a venti cappuccino. Oh, well, that's my greatest concern today. (laughs) What happens is that spiritually kills us. Mm -hmm. It's spiritual poison for most people when you don't have challenges and adversity. But then on the contrary, when then we have situations like this, again, barring anything getting too bad, you know, we obviously don't want to, uh, you know, die or be, uh, you know, severely ill or anything like that. But going through some austerities, where, yes, okay, maybe I can't just go to my favorite restaurant right for right now anytime I want. Maybe I can't go to a concert. Maybe I am kind of stuck at home and I have to crack open a book maybe for the first time in a few years, you know, something like that. Mm. Such austerities are good for us. Yeah, They indeed make us begin to question the world around us. What really is of value? We begin to question this. What really is of value? Is it just the material things that I thought, oh, well, who's the latest entertainer and, and who are they marrying and all this nonsense gossip? Are all these things really of value to me or are there more fundamental things that are truly of value that I lost sight of? So, yes, challenging situations like this make us begin to think in some very real and important ways, but also they make us stronger. You know, because now suddenly, again, we have to live an austere lifestyle. Maybe I can't, at the push of a button, uh, figuratively, just have anything I want. Maybe now I do need to appreciate that everything that I have around me is is something that's precious that I can't just take for granted. I shouldn't take food for granted. I shouldn't take uh, water, clean water, and all these uh, essentials for granted. And indeed, it makes us stronger people. It makes us better people. So this crisis, if anything, it's like a a spiritual austerity and sadhana or spiritual practice that is being done now by the masses. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Excellent. Okay. Sorry, I'm just reading here. Take your time. I I know. Many questions to go through. Uh, okay, so Abdullah is Abdullah is kind of is worried about the other side. Is it possible that with a move like this, that the uh, that the evil people will counterattack? So you know, I guess worrying that uh, that they will win. Mm, sure, um, they. Let me answer this in in full and very bluntly and honestly. The evil forces will try Mm. to counterattack. They will try to counterattack. I can guarantee with my life to every human being who is listening to me both now, but also in the future with these videos that will go up, they will not win. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee that with my life. The forces of evil are going to be defeated. It is impossible for them at this point to win. But they'll try. Mm -hmm. That's the nature of evil, is that they'll always try. They'll try with their last with their last little whimper to fight back. But no, I can guarantee that the forces of good will indeed prevail and the people of the earth will be free once and for all. Excellent. And I agree. I agree. Yeah, well, I like Slavika. It says, uh, we almost be patient, believe in God, and do our best. After this big storm, everything will be in the right place. Now is the time for cleaning the world from evil. It is a kind of a, a massive spring cleaning. <laughs> it's a nice way to think of it. Very true. Yes, yeah, it is a spring cleaning of the entire world. Yes, <laughs> definitely. More than people know. Okay, let's see. Okay, so this is interesting. Flavio Aquino says, following Dharma doctrine, could you please describe what is the devil and evil and how to fight against it? Mm-hmm. Sure, sure, definitely. And yeah, I mean, this is a deep question. It's a metaphysical question. 
uh, but I will definitely try to, uh, to answer this as best as I can. First of all, as far as the idea of literally a devil, um, yeah, this is an idea that you uh, don't really find very much outside of um, really Christianity and Islam, uh, especially uh, Judaism. It's debatable uh, how prevalent the idea of a devil is uh, there. But as far as the Dharmic religions, um, yeah, we don't really so much believe in literally a devil that is one individual metaphysical being who is, let's say, responsible for all evil in the world. Uh, rather, we as individuals, we are responsible for the good and evil that we create in the world. Mm. It's not to say that certainly there aren't temptations, etc. But yes, there is uh, not one specific individual who we would say is responsible for this. So we don't believe in a, in a devil per se. At the same time, we do indeed believe that there is such a thing as evil, that individuals can be evil, that there are actions that are evil, etc. So evil itself does exist. You know, it's, in, it's interesting. Just before our interview, I was having this discussion with one of my students, actually, about the nature of evil yeah. and yeah. whether it even exists. Uh, yes, evil exists. And unfortunately, it's a very modern idea that, oh, if you encounter someone, let's say, who is an evil, who is an evil person, you know, who has oh, murdered people and uh, been a pedophile and all sorts of things. Oh, it's not really that person's fault. If you look at the person's life, oh, you'll see that maybe they were abused or they went through some traumatic thing, etc. This is the uh, modern approach to approaching what is evil. That is that when you encounter instances of evil, it's really something that was brought about by environmental circumstances that came from the from external sources and affected the internal person. Yeah. That's Marxism. Yeah. That's Marxism. The idea that the environment uh, creates who we are as an individual, you know, that we are all economic units that are created by our status in society, our class in society, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this is the opposite of actual reality. There are some individuals who indeed they are just evil. Their essence is evil. Hmm. Now, not their ultimate, not their soul, not their ultimate spiritual essence, but who they are within. They have chosen to be evil. You know, unfortunately, I, many of us have known such people. I've known such people who they had no trauma in their life. They, they were not abused in their life. They were individuals who lived in the lap of luxury and privilege, and yet they choose to be evil. Nonetheless, they themselves had no traumatic experience that made them evil. They, in the same way that good people have this bliss in giving to others and helping others. You know, when you help people, there's a bliss that it gives you, you know, just a happiness that it gives you to help others. In the same way, when we encounter evil people and this for good people, this is hard to imagine, but we have to. Yeah. We have to understand the nature of evil. There are people who, in the same way, when they harm people, they feel a kind of bliss. Yep. They torture someone. When they psychologically manipulate someone, it gives them a thrill, a rush. These are individuals who are inherently evil, and they must be treated as such. And more, they must be punished as such. Yes, indeed. So there are evil people in the world. Um, so yes, that is the nature of evil in a, in a nutshell. We individuals choose to be evil or to be good. You know, a little bit uh, connect to this. Yesterday I did a live stream and one of the uh, uh, audience members uh, using this uh, event as an excuse. I, I, I kind of reacted a little angrily, but anyway, um, <laughs> I, I, hope, I think you'll react a little better. Um, decided that, you know, blame God. His comment was, I hate God. God is doing this all to us. And, uh, you know, basically blaming God for all the bad things happening, b blaming God for evil. If you could discuss that, because maybe some people do react to this, like, you know, why is God doing this to the, to us? Oh, sure, sure, definitely. Well, I mean, as long as there have been human beings, there have been human beings who try to blame God for anything bad that happens to them. And of course, you know, the way that we respond to this is, first of all, you have to have compassion towards such people because they they truly feel lost, you know, something yeah. bad happens to them, and not just this virus, it could be anything, you know, they lose a loved one, or something like that happens to them uh, on a personal level, and they feel abandoned by God. So some people will kind of lash out in this way. We have to have compassion towards such people, and we have to 
first of all, actually, again, just help them on a, on a emotional level. Just kind of tell them, look, it's, it's all right. You know, it's okay. <laughs> Relax. It's all right. Yeah, but yeah. then when they're ready to hear something more philosophical, we have to explain that. No, 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 no. Trace the origins of whatever terrible thing has happened to you. And it didn't come from God. Yeah. It didn't come from God. You know, if you were abused by somebody, if you lost money, you lost a loved one, this, that, anything, something happened, uh, there was a cause for it. There was a cause for it. You know, you lost a loved one. Why? Well, they got ill. People do indeed get ill. Animals get ill. Human beings get ill. On the contrary, some people will live to be 90, etc. So that's the nature of nature. That's the nature of this world. That's the nature of having a body. In the same way with this, uh, with this virus COVID-19 crisis that is happening, uh, yeah, God was not in a laboratory somewhere and created this and said, let me unleash this upon the planet. Yeah. But maybe somebody did. <laughs> right. Maybe somebody did, but I can guarantee you that wasn't God. Why blame person A for an evil that person B did? See, that's the thing. Even with human beings, if this person comes and attacks me with a knife, you know, and leaves me, uh, you know, half dead, but I recover. Why would I go to a stranger and say, you did this to me? You must be punished. You're the re you're responsible. Right. Why? Why blame person B for something person A did in the same way. That's what we're doing when we when we curse at God and we say, oh, God did this. No, God didn't do this. We can we can find out who did it. Yeah. You know, uh, not always, but there is indeed a cause. Oh, there always is a cause. And that cause always is not God. It's another person, it's nature itself, it's bad luck, it's something. It's our own choices very often. You know, very often, interestingly, when we find ourselves in pain, we chose a path that gave us that pain, yeah. but yet we want to blame God. So again, first of all, if it's even important to blame anyone, look for the right person. I guarantee it's not God. God didn't is not causing this. People have caused this COVID-19 crisis. People have caused this. Uh, oh, I guess your time is getting... Uh, okay, we'll get to make this the last one then. Cleefy says, uh, again, uh, do not fear sounds stunning, great, but our curiosity about the information makes us feed our brains with fear porn. Uh, what's the solution to be really informed with strong faith? Right, That's a good during all this yeah where how do you and get yourself informed without feeding into that whole media fear frenzy yeah getting overwhelmed yeah yes. it's by uh it's by getting information in a, in a balanced sort of way seeking out information in a balanced way and this is what i mean uh, yes we need to be informed we can't be in ignorance you know it's not a matter of one or the other that we either uh, just do not fear and we live spiritual lives. Oh, but then we blind ourselves to all our information or vice versa. No, we need to both have very strong spiritual lives in such a way that, yes, we're not fearful, but then we do need to seek out factual information about what's happening around us in a way that's going to help us. You know, um, I've seen this very often that, yes, sometimes people will just, when something like this happens, They'll do nothing but just be on the internet for 10 hours a day, just feeding their mind with, oh, this theory and this terrible thing. And, oh, what happened in that country? How many people died there? And it becomes like, like a negative addiction that ends up harming them. Yeah. No, we need to just gain information in a very, a very sober kind of way, a very balanced kind of way. Just seek out actual information. Once you have it, that's it. Now go back to the rest of your life and to real life. Don't get overwhelmed by all of this information that's happening uh, and especially the negative things, you know, especially any negative things that are happening. Don't become overwhelmed by it. Rather, gain the information that you need to make correct choices in your life. And with the rest of your time, do positive things as much as possible. And let, let me just say this very quickly, if, if I can. This is important. I... It would be wonderful if everyone would, would approach this crisis in this way. This is an opportunity to grow, to grow in every way. And what does that mean? Take this opportunity to take care of your health. You're going to be stuck at home. You're not going to be able to go to McDonald's. Thank God. <laughs> you know, thank God. Start eating right. 
start eating good food. Start making salads for yourself. Start making interesting, wonderful, nutritious, delicious meals. This means exercise. Make sure you don't become a, a couch potato now because you're stuck at home. Exercise at home. Guess what? Learn yoga. <laughs> <laughs> Learn yoga. Get a video. You don't have to go to a yoga class. Start doing yoga. Lift weights. You know, as you know, yeah, I'm a weightlifter. I lift weights constantly. I can't go to the gym now. Well, I have dumbbells at home. So I just lift weights at home, you know. Um, what this means is, again, spiritually, begin to meditate. Do spiritual practices. Have a beautiful altar where you pray. It means have, have a library of books now. If you don't already, go out while you still can. Go to a bookstore. Start getting good books. Again, not novels, not romances. Get good spiritual books, especially ancient scriptures. Use this as an opportunity to read. In other words, in every way imaginable. Do everything to grow now. To grow physically, mentally, spiritually, in every way. And by the time this is over, you will be happy you had this opportunity to grow. This will have been a godsend. That now uh, sporting events, you know, I, I'm not into sports at all. I can't stand uh, uh, watching sports, actually. Playing sports is different. Sporting events are gone. Concerts are gone. Restaurants, cafes, everything, they're gone. This is a godsend. Now you can be home and do good things for yourself and your family as well. You know, that's the thing. If you have a family, if you have children, etc., this is a godsend. Yeah. Start to homeschool for the first time. Even if it's just temporarily, you know, maybe when it's all over, all right, you send them back to public school. Hopefully not. But at least for now, temporarily, homeschool, start to teach your children what you know that they should actually know. You know, take full advantage of this. Spring cleaning. Hey, clean your house. <laughs> Make a sattvic, pure, clean, healthy environment in your home. You see how in so many ways, even if we're stuck at home, we can make the most of this. Yeah. This can ultimately be something that's beneficial for us, where when this is over, and again, I guarantee it's not going to last forever, it will be over sooner than we think, and we'll be able to go out and get fresh air again. When it's over, we will be happy that this actually happened, because we will be reintroduced to the things of importance in life. So see this in a positive way. Excellent. I 100% agree. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Acharya, thank you yep. so much for coming on and, and talking for a very long time today. I, I appreciate you taking this time and giving a very strong and positive uh, and truthful message. And uh, yeah, I encourage everyone, you know, share this video, especially with people who who may in your life, who may be worrying, who may be afraid. Share this video, especially now. Now's the time to do it because we don't know what's going to happen with the Internet. So share this video as much as you can. And and Ajay, yes. thank you so much again. Thank you. My pleasure. And if I can end with three words yes. from Bhagavad Gita again. Do not fear. Wonderful. Do not fear. Do not fear. Everything will be light in the end. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. There you go, guys. So, um, the end, as he said, do not fear. I think that's the perfect way to end this. I'm not going to add any more. Go to dharmacentral.com. I forgot to put this on the screen at the beginning. Dharmacentral.com is Acharya Ji's uh, website. That's D H A R M A central c e n t r a l dot com dharma central dot com of course he has a you go there and then you can find he has a youtube channel he has uh you can i follow him on gab etc dharma central but very very important share this video guys share this video this is an important one so share this video as much as you can and do it now <laughs> because before you know I agree with him. I believe, you know, I, follow, I have been following Q for years and I agree that uh, there's a good chance we will have 10 days of darkness. Um, no, no one can say exactly what this means for sure, but most likely we may have the internet go down. We may have television go down. 
there's a I think there's a very good chance uh, people who are following Q we expected something like this what that's happening right now we expected this big storm we've been warned about this for a couple of years so I therefore there's a good chance that that other warning is also true the 10 days of darkness people are going to be afraid but if you send them this video now they watch it now then when it happens if it happens they will be ready they won't be so afraid I hope and if it doesn't happen great we'll see but anyway share this video and I'll be back again for a show tonight lots of love to all of you Mwah. Uh, just go to Dharma Central and uh, follow Acharya Ji. See you next time. Bye for now.